it's my great honor and privilege to introduce KCA's global ambassador and co-founder, the amazing, the talented, and the incredibly compassionate Ms. Alicia Keys. champagne. Good evening. Yes! I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm so crazy, crazy honored to be with you. And I want to thank you, Peter. Um, I can't believe it's been 10 years. I can't even believe it. It's unbelievable. And when I look around this room at all the beautiful, incredible faces that are here, you know, I see so many familiar faces and those that have been with us from the beginning. That's why I couldn't even start the show because I was so busy hugging and loving on all the incredible people in this room. And whether you're here with us from day one or just now joining us, I'm so glad you're here because it is going to take all of us. It's going to take an army of dedicated, loving, compassionate, global-minded, forward-thinking citizens to complete this mission. And the mission is to ensure everyone living with HIV around the world receives the treatment they need to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the first step toward the end of AIDS. And ladies and gentlemen, it is possible. It is possible. It is possible within the next decade. If you in any doubt, if you in any way doubt it, let's look at our past. It tells us that anything is possible. The polio vaccine lifted the darkness of that epidemic in the 50s. A march on the bridge in Selma gave way to the civil rights movement in the 60s. Women's liberation transformed the home and the workplace in the 70s, and political and pop culture hammered at the Berlin Wall in the 80s. In their own time, these challenges had all, all the shadings of impossible. And yet we look back at them today as certainties, as if they'd been here all along. Of course we have vaccines, of course we have civil rights, and of course we will see the end of AIDS. But it's going to take work, and it's going to take us. And in the 1980s, as the AIDS pandemic swept into the public eye, our own government fell short of action. People were scared and uncertain, and in the 90s, major cultural and social movements gave a voice to people living with HIV and AIDS. We wanted answers, we wanted treatments. Politicians and drug companies responded. There was progress, but that was here, not there. Which brings me to 2001, when I met the dynamic Lee Blake. And we talked, that's right, clap, 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 because it changed my life. It changed my life, thank you, thank you for that. And we talked about the tragedy unfolding, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, and millions dying of AIDS because the drugs, which were widely available in wealthy countries, were not available there. And I went to Africa and I saw firsthand the epidemic unfolding. And I held motherless children in my arms and I connected to lives far outside of my own. And I was Outrage. I couldn't even believe it. it. It lit a whole fire inside of me that I never even knew before. And it was there where I discovered one of my greatest purposes in life. <laughs> so let me show you how it all began. 